Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check these headlines this morning. Will the real Satoshi Nakamoto please stand up? We may find out exactly who that is. We'll get into it. India and crypto regulations. Bank of England deputy governor says crypto is an imminent threat. We're going to explain what we believe that is. Gary Gensler won't approve a spot ETF, and I believe we know why. Ryan Selkis from Masari thinks Ripple is guilty of fraud and the SEC should charge them. Well, I have something for him to take a look at, and I'd love to hear his thoughts on it. Ripple Net Cloud and cross-border payments, it's coming, everyone. And I think I'm going to show you evidence of that today. And the question is now, will an XRP breakout take us to a price discovery mode? We'll get into all of that and more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. Got to give a special shout out to Pat and Gordon. My dear friends are going to be moving to Kansas City, and I wish them all the best. I know they all listen to the show. I had a great time hanging with them over the weekend, and I just wanted to tell them I wish them well, and we are going to stay in touch, believe it or not, and I, I look forward to all the many different hangs we get to have together. Let's get into it this morning. $2.620 trillion, and we are off by 8.84% on the cryptocurrency market this morning. What happened, everyone? What happened? Well, I'm going to give you my uneducated macro view of what went on. A huge sell-off. And when you look down here, it's pretty much the entire market, right? It's, it, it, it is everything is down, which tells me Bitcoin dominance still controls the scene. And there was a huge sell-off. We were below $60,000 just a couple, an hour or two ago this morning. Now above 60000 Look, for me... What I'm seeing here is a huge sell-off, people taking profits. Let us not forget as we move forward here, Bitcoin future ETFs are, you know, they exist now, right? And they're only getting that market bigger. So really what the institutions have now is a lever, lever for the up to buy, right? And which they've always had. And with the futures now coming into play heavily, they have a lever to play the downside too. So big money moves the market. And I see big money taking profits here is what I see. Looking right here, we see XRP is at $1.09 right now. We see that obviously it was a huge bleed off, off more than 9% this morning. 10644 on the low side and 12089 on the high side. We get back to see if we can climb again, right? And and the reality is I don't follow price like this. After I, you know, do the channel and the numbers for people who are listening in the car and want to hear the prices, I don't really follow the prices unless something is taking place that day. Um, uh, I, I just don't. I'm more worried about the fundamental news, which we cover heavily here. And here's some fundamental news right here. Trade Shift, a recent product added to Link2, Link2.com, private investment made simple, is recently sold out. Now, I don't know if they're going to be re-upping that, but I did want to tell you, I did take a look at the site and saw that there's less than a thousand shares of Ripple left, and I don't know if they're replenishing or not. So, we better hope they do because I know a lot of people buy it up quickly and Uphold has shares but I also saw a couple other things that have sold out linked to shares I hope they put more up at that as well but nevertheless ladies and gentlemen it is the place for private equity make sure you check it out the, the stuff does not last long take a look right here this is more great information ladies and gentlemen but you gotta click the link I got it in the description in the comment box look at this Woohoo is finally here. No more monthly fees from iTrust Capital. I told you it is the best crypto gold silver IRA on the planet, and bar none, they continue to carry the belt. It is absolutely true. And if you click the link either here on my Twitter or in the description comment box, you'll get $100 worth of Bitcoin for signing up and no monthly fees. Come on in. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Shout out to Blake and Blake Skadron and the whole crew there. Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto or... 
he says he is, <laughs> could finally be unmasked at the $64 billion crypto trial in Florida. David Kleiman's family, which is on the right-handed picture there, has sued Australian programmer Craig Wright on the left for the control of their deceased relative's alleged share of Nakamoto's assets. Craig Wright has said, and he told us when we were shooting the movie Krypton Airs, that he was Satoshi Nakamoto. Well, I'm, I want to see this actually play out and really find out here. I don't understand if you are the real Satoshi Nakamoto, no matter who you are. And I know David Kleiman has passed away, but his family is looking to uh, 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 so- solve and resolve this issue for their self and their family. Uh, but y- you could simply, if you have the keys, you could open the wallet and just show people, well, I'm the only one with the keys to what Satoshi Nakamoto's wallet has in it. And then that would solve it, right? So uh, it just seems a little this whole thing seems a little strange, right? Looking right here, this is something that has been strange, more like a bad tennis match. But this is India Parliament meeting on crypto. And what they have said is that there is a consensus that was reached that cryptocurrency should be regulated in the country and that a blanket ban is off the table. Can I add finally? Because (laughs) is it finally? Because I mean, they've been back and forth on this worse than the United States even. But Somehow, they're still ahead of us in getting it done, it appears. Looking right here, um, this is a big statement, but I think we can part the water here. Crypto poses imminent threat to financial stability. Bank of England Deputy Governor. It says crypto poses an imminent threat to financial stability. It goes on to talk about, you know, all of this stuff and how it could threaten. But look, what where I want to part the water here is 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 right here. This is where you get the demand and the pressure and the incentive to release a central bank digital currency. That's where I believe the language is coming from here. Cryptos in and of themselves are a problem because we don't have the CBDC on and off ramp to track what's being bought and by whom. Don't like it. Don't believe it. It's still true. That's the ultimate end goal, right? I mean... Look, I, you know, Jim Rickards, I believe, has commented on this. Raul Powell has commented on this and many other really smart people about e- economics and new technology and things of that nature. And they all come to the same place that essentially banks are going to have to be a node on these protocols, these payment protocols. You know, and I really do agree with uh, Brian Brooks and in the interview we showed here a few days ago, you know, the word cryptocurrencies in and of themselves is, is is confusing to people. The nomenclature of that is really bad for crypto. They should be called like payment networks. Just that's it. Just they're new payment protocols, they're new payment networks. And that if you just start seeing them that way, then I think you really start to sort out what has a use case and what doesn't. Now, here's a guy who's been trying to sort out crypto, and not many of us have been happy about it, but not with his approach, at least. Uh, Gensler has made it clear earlier that regulatory body thinks that the crypto market is not mature enough to handle a spot ETF. You know, like I said, we had the futures ETFs that keep getting approved. Now it seems the SEC would rather approve an Ether futures ETF than a spot Bitcoin one. Well, I believe, and I point to uh, remarks that Gary Gensler has made in the past. We, what do we know about his his immediate approach? He's going after the exchanges, right? He wants to get the exchanges tucked into the SEC securities framework. Don't you don't have to like it, but that's what he's on. The, that's what he's on the path to do, right? So for me, when I think about this, until we get or until he gets the exchanges tucked into that regulatory framework, he's not going to uh, approve a spot ETF for Bitcoin or anything else. That's just my uh, uh, speculation about his thoughts and his approach. But once they have that in that tucked in that framework, I think you will see that take place. The problem with Gary Gensler is, though, if he manages to get the exchanges tucked into just like NASDAQ or the NYSE, will he go even further and say, well, because the exchanges are now under the framework of the Security Exchange Commission, that also means that everything on there should be regulated by us, too. 
And that's what concerns me about him most, right? It really does. All right, take a look at this. Uh, really, really damning comments here coming from Ryan Selkis from Asari here. Ripple guilty of fraud, he says, but not securities laws violations, Masari Selkis says. And if you look at this, he says Ripple Labs have been fighting the case. He said, they misled, this is what he says, they misled XRP holders over inside token selling, selectively disclosed data, and hype partnership as value additive to the underlying cur- cur- currency. Selkis also argued that the SEC Chief Gary Gensler had been supportive of Commissioner Purse's safe harbor proposal. Ripple's allegedly fraudulent activities could have been fixed. Instead, SEC is fighting technical securities violations while ignoring the safe harbor, which would prevent fraud. Well, here's the problem with that. Gary Gensler has admitted that he hasn't even looked at what the safe harbor proposal is from Hester Purse, and that's reinforced here by John Deaton down below. Uh, This is what I shared with uh, Ryan Selkis, who appears to have some kind of clarity over the situation. I said, Ryan Selkis, who goes by two-bit idiot, which is starting to really, really line with the comments he's making here. I've read that you think Ripple is guilty of fraud. I'm curious how you would define these actions for fundraising at 5113. Obfuscating uh, U.S. regs and laws by disguising your identities so you can invest under fake names in multiple accounts. Just want a level playing field. That's all we're after here, right? That's all we're after. And, you know, if you haven't heard it, it's only a few seconds. Take a listen right here. We got it keyed up. We want to make sure that we're not at a conference when the when the sale is is on. Um, so we, we don't want to do two major things at the same time. Ah, uh-huh. okay. So right. so uh, either before or after. Okay, Mike. Will, will there be a limited? Uh, will there be a limited valuation up for sale? Listen. Yeah, Mike. Or, yeah, Mike's, Mike's asking: Is will there be a limit on the amount that a person could invest in Ethereum? Um, a, a person can can buy uh, from any number of different identities. We may limit the size, the, the unit size of a sale, um, just to um, make it easier to disguise. Um, Let's say if you're a whale and you want some privacy, um, you can buy um, 50,000 units and just, just uh, um, so, so nobody scares people with, uh, with an enormous initial purchase. Um, so if, if you are a whale, if you want to plan on investing uh, several million US dollars worth, um, then you can do that in, uh, for multiple identities. With multiple identities, he goes on to talk about with pseudonymous names. Um, Listen, you know, you're fundraising, you're touching American investors, and you're explaining to them how you can disguise your identity and use multiple accounts with pseudonymous names. Uh, Ryan Selkis, I'm just curious where you're at on this with your high-powered perception that you have these days. RippleNet Cloud is improving cross-border payments in a key remittance corridor connecting Money Match app and Al Ansari Exchange to redefine the customer experience with same-day payments to Malaysia. Look, I mean, we kind of co- covered and touched on this. This is showing you that Ripple is not distracted to the ultimate end goal of what the company is. It's it's an enterprise blockchain solution company, right? Period. That's what they do. And the XRP ledger is a decentralized exchange for all the value of all the world. Period. Separate. Nonprofit foundation. Right? The whole bit. So they keep pressing forward here. And then there's the reminder of this. The Ripple Liquidity Hub, which as Ashish Birla told us, right? We know what. What do we know about it? I'll tell you what we know about it. We know that it sits on on top of something like Coinbase right? And exchanges and banks, right? And it becomes an aggregator, right? A curator of real-time price. It would almost appear that if you look at it that way, because they're trying to get, you know, uh, price aggregation for the big clients, institution, banks, exchanges, and all of them. And CoinMe, in fact, is going to be using Ripple Liquidity Hub, right? 
And by the way, CoinMe is a partner with Coinstar, all the little exchange, you know, coin exchange and the dollar bills in all the grocery stores that you see. And you can go in there and you can buy Bitcoin on the CoinMe uh, ATMs and the Coinstar machines, which is impressive in itself. But they're going to be using this Ripple liquidity hub to get this aggregation. And that is very exciting. You guys should be checking out CoinMe. And they also have a, uh, a website. And let me pull that for you really quickly so you can see this right here cryptoliteracy.org this is it and anybody that you're a you have a family member or maybe you've been in this space and you don't really have all your gap fills on what is the difference between this crypto that crypto you can go to cryptoliteracy cryptoliteracy.org and take this little like quiz kind of challenge thing and it helps educate you on what's going on in the space and the difference between different technologies and things of that nature it's very very cool so make sure you check that out as well all right, so now getting back to this and hearing the fraud, I hope he answers the question to that. Ripple's moving forward. The Ripple liquidity hub, I believe, is absolutely bigger than we even know and what it can serve. And think about it, if it can sit on something and aggregate costs for someone like Coinbase, doesn't this almost fall in with the backdoor plan of what Gary Gensler wants to do? He wants to rein in the exchanges, possibly use something like Ripple Liquidity Hub to source the accurate price discovery for maybe all the U.S. exchanges. I'm speculating a bit here, but it does seem like it lines up. We'll see how this all ends up here. One thing I do know is, is that real progress is not measured by when the second hand of the clock moves, but when the hour hand moves. And I believe we just saw the hour hand move. What I'm talking about here is a repost from uh, David Schwartz here, and there was much rejoicing. And he's talking about the announcement that we talked here about, about the Zoom wallet really getting successfully registered and approval from the Dutch Central Bank. That means they are in line with regulations relating to cryptocurrency to fiat currency trading. Now, full disclosure, it's only available to Dutch citizens at this point. But I believe we just saw the hour hand move because it's a central bank. It's the Dutch central bank. And what we're really seeing is, is the bridge through the Dutch central bank from cryptocurrency to fiat trading. And because it's the Zoom wallet, I can only imagine that it would help build out the use potentially at some point of the Ripple liquidity hub. Don't you think? Pretty timely that they both come out right at the same time or damn near it. Now, let's take on this question here because we know that the market's getting beat up today. Yeah, all of our portfolios, it's like, don't even open it. Don't even look at it, right? Crypto analyst Altcoin Sherpa predicts XRP will break out of accumulation and enter into a price discovery mode. Well, listen. We're all waiting for a price discovery mode, but I tend to think that we've got to have a little more going on in order for that to happen, which means I believe the case has to end. We've got to have some kind of clarity, which may really involve uh, legislation from Congress, hopefully sooner rather than later. And, and I know that that's a big wish, right? But I do believe at some point we're going to get that. I really do. I'm glass half full. So as far as price discovery mode goes, I'm excited for it. But I also feel like for price discovery mode to really happen, we have to have the clarity. Case has got to be settled. But we also have to have a very another very important key part here, which is utility, use case utility. We need to see use case utility driving price more than the speculative buying of the asset itself, which is what we're seeing up until now. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Before I get out of here, I do want to tell you, give us a follow on TikTok, ladies and gentlemen. Digital perspectives, no spaces, all lowercase. Just give us a follow on there. It's really going well. It's hitting hard. We're doing well. So make sure you give us a follow on there. We will be putting exclusive content on that uh, platform. And I will catch all of you on the next one.